Good morning, everyone. Max Harmon is a relatively recent graduate of Inman High School. During his time in high school, Max was widely involved intra and extracurricularly, competing in cross country and golf, as well as Scholars Bowl and forensics. Max was a three-year National Honor Society member and served and served terms as Inman FFA and co-student body president. He graduated one of six class valedictorians in the spring of 2018. Shortly after graduating, Max was elected Kansas FFA state president and spent the following year traveling the state and country, facilitating and speaking to high school students, donors, and stakeholders. At the time, Max started his freshman year at K-State University, majoring in biochemistry and global food systems leadership and maintained his penchant for extracurricular involvement across campus. Currently, Max is in his sophomore year and is struck and is stuck with his intended major. Looking towards the future, Max is looking forward to impacting K-State through his organizations, attending graduate school, and pursuing a career in agricultural biotechnology and research. Let's give a let's give Max a warm welcome back this morning. get ready to go. Can everyone hear me all right? Perfect. So, hi everyone. Hope you like the little pun, uh, the name of my presentation, Maximizing Life After High School. So, uh, thank you all so much for, for having me back. Um, it's, it's great to be back here. It's great to get to see all of you again. Um, so, for those of you who didn't know me when I was in high school, so you freshmen and sophomores would have been in junior high uh, when I was still around here, uh, but Nick had, uh, that was a great intro. Um, I was pretty widely involved um, here throughout anything and everything. Uh, and that's part of why I love my experience here at Inman. Um, for any of you who, whether you love it here at Inman or you can't wait to get out, um, there are a lot of really good experiences that you get here, kind of no matter what, um, no matter what you do or no matter what anybody else tells you. Uh, coming from a small school and coming from Inman has given me a lot, a lot of things um, and I've benefited a ton from coming from a small school and being able to do uh, all of those things. So, um, just a little bit of introductions before I get back uh, into my presentation. Uh, but I've stuck with my intended major. I am a biochemistry major uh, with a secondary major in global food systems leadership. So, that kind of does three things for me. Biochemistry, that's my career goal. So, I want to be a scientist. I want to be working with biotechnology and genetics. Uh, specifically in agriculture. So that includes a lot more school after my undergraduate here at K-State. Uh, and then the secondary major allows me to remain tied in with the College of Ag and leadership development curriculum through that secondary major. So that's kind of what I'm about and what my classes are. Um, and thank you all once again for, for giving me the opportunity to share a little bit. Um, but kind of going through a timeline of what I've done and what life has looked like for Max after high school. So right after high school, that was when I was elected um, to state FFA office, and that was a defining role for me, um, both for kind of my life and especially for my first year up at college. Uh, so that freshman summer, I spent just about the entire summer up at K-State. Um, I think I counted, I had about two weeks of free time throughout that whole summer uh, where I was back home not doing FFA things. Uh, but that defined my freshman summer. Um, and then freshman year, uh, we dove in in August um, and really got involved in uh, those, those kind of three different categories are what I use to define my freshman year and my years throughout college. Uh, so for school, school, my major classes, anything uh, that, everything that you all are going to experience, um, hope, I'm gonna try and, try and generalize stuff and draw parallels between what my experience has been like and what you all are also gonna experience no matter what you do after high school. Um, if you go on to a form of secondary education, um, a lot of times, especially at a four-year university, that first year is going to be a lot of gen ed classes. So any of those classes that you can get out of the way um, here while you're in high school, uh, how many of you seniors are taking, or juniors, are taking online classes or classes through Hutch right now? Perfect. That's going to set you up pretty well and lighten, your, lighten up your class load, hopefully, uh, when you do uh, get on and are able to apply those credits. Um, outside of school, uh, I got involved and maintained my penchant for extracurricular involvement. 
So my three main things, uh, there were three main things for me that I try and keep it to three main things each and every year. Uh, those three things, uh, the first was my living group. So I joined a fraternity at Kansas State University. Um, not something in high school I would have seen myself doing. I don't see myself as a particularly frat kind of guy, uh, but finding, finding that Greek life was not something I saw myself doing um, in high school. But there are a lot of benefits, and I'll talk a little bit about that more later on. Um, and out, other than that, there was Farmhouse, there was FFA, Farmhouse is my fraternity, FFA, and then finally there was Quest. So that's what this group of people down in the lower right are. Um, when you get up to college, there's one thing that I cannot emphasize more, more and more over anything else, and that is to get involved. Just like here at high school, um, at Inman, it's pretty easy to be involved because everybody has to be. At a small school, everybody's involved just to keep everything alive. Um, at college, it's really different. It is not that hard to fall into the cycle of going to your dorm room, leaving, coming out of your cave for classes and going right back in. Um, and I know some students who have kind of gone into that, um, and that is a super hard cycle to break out of. Um, and for me, in my point of view, in my experience that I've had uh, for these first two years up at college, I can't think um, of kind of a worse way, a worse like way to just live life going through college. Um, one of the most important things is to find something to connect yourself to. Um, and there's a ton of stories um, and data that backs that up besides just me and my stories. Um, people who, and students who get involved when they're up in college and find themselves connected um, to something bigger than themselves are gonna have way better rates of retention and persistence going through college. Sophomore summer um, was broken up into three really easy parts. The first third until the end of June was state FFA convention. So that was me practicing, memorizing for state convention. Um, the middle third was the low valley after state office and after state convention. Um, so that was when I suddenly found myself having a ton more free time um, and got to explore summer a little bit more. And the final third was the internship that I held um, for that summer. And so internships are a really big piece. Uh, that's something that you all probably have heard about. And once you get into college, everybody is talking about internships um, and about what you're going to be doing to prepare yourself uh, for after college. Uh, so that's a big piece and a piece of advice that I would give you all um, is to actively be thinking about that and be planning forward. And that's a big point that I'll touch on going forward. Finally, sophomore year. My big three things for sophomore year, all acronyms. I've got SGA, SAB, and STUFO. So those all stand for Student Governing Association. I am the Senate Parliamentarian for Kansas State University, SGA, uh, which is a really great role if you're interested in STUCO or student government here talk to me, I can get you set up with K-State SGA. Student Alumni Board is SAB. It and STUFO are both arms of other organizations that all serve to help K-State. Student Alumni Board is the student leadership arm of the Alumni Association. We do recruitment events and, and donor engagement. Uh, and then Student Foundation is all about developing a culture of philanthropy on campus. And I'm gonna have to keep moving fast or else my laptop is gonna keep falling asleep on me. if I can get the password right. Perfect. All right, so that kind of follows just my timeline after college and what I've been doing. Now, before I dive into the actual meat of what I want to share with you all, everybody, did all of you bring your backpacks? Some of you, if you brought your backpack, pull out a piece of paper, pull out your notebook, pull out a writing utensil, Share with the people next to you if, you, if they don't have one. To get your piece of paper and your pencil. Now that you've heard a little bit about what I've been doing up in college, think about what you all want to be doing. You all should have, be thinking at least, about kind of what your plans are going to be after high school. If you don't know, that's totally okay. But you should definitely have some questions. So go ahead, write down at least one question that you have about college, about what I've done, 
about something you want me to expound a little bit more upon, and we'll try and answer some of those as we go through and also at the end. Questions? Perfect. Write those questions. Okay, so we've got the what. We've got what I've done. Now, so what? Why does that matter? What's the point? What did I do to get there? So this is kind of the main, the main meat of, of the message of how I've been able to develop um, a pretty successful college career thus far. I feel more connected than I've ever been to my institution. I have success in my classes. I feel connected um, and college is going pretty well. But how did I get there? It's not something you just fall into. There's kind of three main points. The first is intentionality. And so that's kind of what I was talking about before, having a plan, being intentional with what you want to do and how you're going to do it. You don't just fall into um, a lot of great uh, success or just a lot of happenstance. Good luck happens, but people who plan ahead tend to be a lot luckier. The second is enthusiasm. So if you can't tell, um, that's one of my defining characteristics. I'm an enthusiastic person. I mean, not everybody has to be on fire for absolutely everything um, and be bouncing up and down the stage like you see me doing here, but it is important to develop some enthusiasm. Develop a connection to something that's bigger than yourselves. Develop a passion. And then that third one, uh, there's tons of little life hacks and pro tips that I'll share um, kind of at the end. And there's just little things that just based on the way life is and the way higher education is set up. And even here at high school, there are little things that some people, if they understand how to do that, they're gonna be way farther ahead. And they're not hard things to do. You just need to know about them and be able to do them. And they get you a lot farther in what you wanna do. Now, what do we do with all that? We'll kind of unpack each of those. Maybe. There we go. Uh, so the first is intentionality. And so breaking that up into kind of its four different places. Um, so institution, that's where you're going to end up at. Whether that's at a trade school, whether that's at Hutch for a couple of years, or whether you're coming straight up to K-State or going right into the workforce, you need to be intentional about what the type of institution is that you're going to be joining. So it plays a lot bigger role than you kind of think of. Not all colleges, are the same. Some have a lot of similarities, but be sure to take advantage of those college visits that you're allowed to go on your junior and senior year. The more colleges I think that you can visit, the better able you're going to understand what you want out of your college career and how you're going to get there. So for me, I am fully bought in. I've drank the purple Kool-Aid. Um, I'm fully bought into Kansas State. Um, and as a demonstration of that, um, that's kind of where all my enthusiasm and involvement stems from. Um, I'm fully bought into the wildcat way and could spew a whole bunch of other cliches, uh, but that's, that's because I found an institution um, that I have a lot of love for and that does a lot of things for me. You all need to be thinking about what you want in your institutions. Um, the second piece of intentionality, your major, your classes, and that acronym up there is CASIS. That's the K-State online uh, version of like how to manage classes and everything. Um, so being intentional, you all have heard this before, but being intentional with what you want to do and why you're majoring in what you're majoring in. It's not a great plan to just go to college and have a major, that's great, that's the first step, but you need to have a major that has an end goal. There, I see, I have a ton of friends and see a lot of people up at K-State who are like, what are you majoring in? Oh, I'm majoring in psychology. What do you want to do with that? I don't know. And that's just kind of a common answer. And that's crazy. Uh, you're going to school and paying all this money for classes and everything. Um, and you need to have an idea of why you're there. You need to have an idea for what that end goal is or else you're not going to have that same persistence um, to finish like everyone else is. Uh, the third is living environment. So that's kind of the third factor uh, that plays into a lot of college success. Um, you've got your institution, you've got your classes and your major, uh, and then your living environment. So when I was in your seats just a couple of years ago, um, I kind of thought I was just going to take the pretty standard route, go live in the dorms, do that for a couple years, maybe move out of campus 
didn't put a lot of thought into it. Um, but like I said before, um, an older guy who I knew and respected through FFA pulled me to some recruitment weekend um, for farmhouse. Um, and I suddenly had my eyes open to a whole new world of like possibilities of what my living environment could do for me. And so I'm not saying that you all have to go Greek and join a fraternity or a sorority, but I am saying that you all need to think about what you want um, from your living situation in college. There's a lot of benefits and disadvantages to every option that you have. The one thing I will say, um, you should not live off of campus your freshman year. A lot of colleges have the rule that you have to live on campus in some sort of organized living. Um, K-State doesn't have that rule, but I think it should be one. Um, if you live off campus in some house, especially with your high school buddies, um, especially when you come up to Manhattan or to some other college, um, you're gonna be at a lot greater chance of just kind of walking on the campus, going to classes and heading straight back home. Um, and you lose out on so much experiences and so much valuable things that you get um, from having to meet new roommates and having to meet a whole bunch of different people with different perspectives from you. And so I would encourage you all um, to think about where you're living after high school. Second, enthusiasm. So kind of two parts to that. Uh, get involved. There are a million opportunities on any campus to get involved with just about anything and everything um, you can imagine. So you can carry on your passions from high school or you can join new ones. Just a couple of examples. Um, this right here, this is K-State Proud. You might notice a couple of celebrities. Uh, we've got Coach Bill Snyder right there, um, Dr. Pat Bosco, who just retired. Those are a couple of K-State legends and celebrities. Um, and through my involvement with things like Student Foundation and Student Alumni Board, that's given me so many connections um, to the greater K-State community. It's just anecdotal, but in my mind, I see a pretty clear pattern emerging from my time here at K-State. There are, the people who are involved all know each other. I know people from SAB and SGA and Student Foundation who are all like three separate organizations who I didn't know except through those organizations, but those people all know each other and they're not in those other organizations. There's this circle of collected and organized and ambitious people, um, certainly at K-State, that all seem to know each other. And it's this really cool group and everybody seems to have at least a one degree or second degree connection um, to anybody else who's in that group, who's involved in anything at K-State. And so, through that, I've gotten so many connections. I rode around with President Myers, the like four-star general president of K-State University, um, for like an hour for giving golf cart rides to students just the other week for K-State Proud. Um, talk about an amazing experience. I'm like kind of, the president of the, of the university knows my name and knows who I am. I mean, I'm just a sophomore at the university. So just getting involved and finding not only where to be involved, but the right places to be involved and the right people to make those connections with are huge. And the second is say yes to anything um, and everything experience wise. If you are offered an opportunity to go on a trip or offered the opportunity to join this organization, say yes. I can't remember a lot of opportunities that I took on that I didn't, uh, that I regretted later on. Now granted, you tend not to remember the things that you didn't enjoy as much and you definitely tend to remember the things that you did enjoy. Um, but you're gonna enjoy and have a lot greater college experience if you say yes to those experiences um, and just start taking things on. Take on a little bit of a heavier workload um, and it'll pay off in the end. For example, uh, this, this picture up here, um, Home of the Blues, Beale Street, Memphis, Tennessee. That was a couple of weeks ago. Um, I had a road trip with a couple of farmhouse buddies. Um, we all had to be out of the house for the weekend. And so we, had, we took that trip, one guy planned it out I thought I had a bunch of homework to do. I was able to get it done ahead of time and be able to be just fine. And that's an experience that I will never forget and always have in my back pocket. Okay, finally, we'll see where I'm at on time. Um, but life hacks, I need to be finishing up on time. Um, but we'll just buzz through these real quickly. Um, ACT and scholarships. The ACT is a huge, long, super sucky test, uh, but it is worth it. If you just take it a couple of times, um, and I know that sounds insane, why would you wanna take that test multiple times? Um, just like anything else, ACT is a game. It is a, it's a test, um, and it tests a lot of things that you all have learned in high school. And most of you have a lot of the knowledge that's on that test, but when people take it, 
it's just a different format and it takes them longer. And the more times you take it, the better you get at it. And a two point increase by taking the ACT one more time can get half of your tuition paid for. So take the ACT multiple times, quick life hack, and apply for as many scholarships as you can. Just apply, even if you have like a fifth, a 20% success rate, that'll set you up way better going forward. Um, if you work ahead now, and then continue to apply for scholarships in college, because they don't disappear after senior year. Uh, GPA, online classes, transfer classes. Um, transferring up to Hutch has a lot, or transferring from Hutch has a lot of really good benefits. My best friend, Dakota Parkers, just joined me after a year from Hutch up at K-State. Um, one thing to be aware of and to know about, transfer classes don't credit for your GPA. They're great to get classes out of the way that you want to take at Hutch, and they're a lot cheaper. But also, if you're going into an engineering major and transfer up to K-State after two years at Hutch, you're gonna have a heck of a harder time trying to keep your GPA up to maintain those scholarships um, than somebody who took all their gen eds at K-State as well. So that's something to consider. Professional skills. If you can learn to talk about experiences and pitch yourself and have a personal brand and just go into an interview and have those skills, that'll get you into any organization that you want. That's how I've gotten into all of my campus involvement. Friends, the biggest life hack of all, find a friend in all of your classes. If you don't have a friend already in there, make one. If you have to miss a class, they can get you notes, they can study together on tests and exams. Um, if there's one thing on here that I can't recommend enough, go make friends as many as possible. In high school, it's super easy. College, it gets a little harder. Work on it. Decal, college runs on Google Calendar. I cannot remember a time uh, when I did not have Google Calendar. I knew I didn't have it in high school, um, but college runs on Google Calendar, get Google Calendar, color code it, it's amazing. Um, and then campus resources. So there's tons of resources on campus, tutoring, PowerCat Financial, the REC, anything and everything that you already pay for at the campus that you're going to be going to. So utilize those, it's a ton of great things um, that you can get for free. So that was a really quick buzz through um, through kind of what my college experience has looked like and some of my pro tips for how to survive college and how to succeed. Um, but the better thing is, is you all have a bunch of questions that I know um, that's gonna be a lot more valuable for me to spend my time answering these last couple of minutes um, than continuing to jabber up here. So, let's go ahead and get to that. Yeah, yeah you can just yell it out. That's a great question. You know, in high school, I never had a ton of social media. In college, everybody has social media, except me. So I still don't have TikTok. Um, but that's awesome. I am so glad to hear that Gabe is famous on TikTok. That's great. What else? Yeah, Nick. Awesome questions. So time management is a huge thing uh, in college. There's kind of two breakdowns to that. So classes wise, you have a ton more time in college. You're only spending, if I'm taking a 15 credit hour semester, you're spending approximately 15 hours in class over a whole week. And so that means you have a ton of free time in between those classes. That is super easy to just get on your phone on Snapchat or something and just waste an entire hour between classes. Uh, but Google Calendar, that's how I manage my time. I, Mr. Weinbrenner can attest, he asked me about this presentation at the game on Saturday, and like I knew it was in the back of my head coming up, but it wasn't in the next couple of days. Like that's how, that's how I've gotten in the mode of operating, um, is that Google Calendar keeps everything in the long term in there, booked, it's flagged, I can look at it when I get on my laptop. Um, but Google Calendar keeps everything on track for me. Um, and then I just have sticky notes. If any of you use sticky notes now, great. That's a strategy that I use. I just have a running to-do list in the upper right-hand corner of my laptop at all times. That just shows me my list of tasks. And so if I have free time, I get guilt-tripped into working on those instead of wasting the time away. Yeah, Jackson. Ooh, good question. Um, what would I tell someone who doesn't know what they want to major in? Um, I would tell them there's a lot of really good tools and resources that you can that you can search out. Mr. Fonsteel has a lot of really good sources. Um, I know that um, career, the Kansas Pipeline, 
that test that we took at some time. Um, there's a lot of resources for that, uh, but also the other thing that I would say um, is to start looking for examples. So whether that, that's visiting your college campus and finding those departments and just talking to those people, um, new student services centers at campuses are really good. And even if you don't quite know what you want to major in, I'm sure they can find, they, they are really good at finding and setting you up with people who you might be interested in talking with. Um, and I think that's going to be more helpful than a lot of tests even, is finding somebody who you really like admire and could see yourself doing that task. Um, and then finding real world, real world mentors to pair up with and see, see what their experience was like and if that's something you could do. Math tests for juniors and seniors, how many of them have made college visits? Raise your hand. Yeah, how many of you have visited a college, done a college visit yet? Yeah. If you can keep up with the classes, if you can miss a day of class, college visits are a ton of fun. It's a great experience. They, they treat you like royalty. I mean, I can tell you, like, now that I'm up there, I don't get, you know, I don't get toured around the campus. I don't get my lunch paid for for anything. New students get all the good perks. So they show you guys around really well. I have a lot of friends who are new student service ambassadors. All right. What other questions are there? How much time do we have? Five minutes. Oh, perfect. Four minutes. Yeah. What's in the purple Kool-Aid? If any of you have heard the expression before, drinking the Kool-Aid, um, it's a reference to some historical event, but I, it's just a reference for something that I'm super bought into. Um, if you all haven't, if you all haven't heard, um, there's a like student body election going down right now at Kansas State University um, for student ambassador. Uh, and I happen to be one of those three finalists for that. Um, so that's a really cool thing. Um, so in balancing putting this presentation together, I've also been balancing texting all of my connections um, up there at K-State to get plugs sent out in group meets with that link and everything. Um, so I'm super bought in. I definitely have drank the purple Kool-Aid. I'm all bought in on K-State. Um, and if you all have questions about K-State in particular, I would love nothing more than to sit down with you and convince you why you should be a Wildcat. Is this, are you all the freshmen? Yes, freshman section, cool. I want to hear a question from, from some of the freshmen. We've had questions from over here. What all were some of those questions that you all wrote down earlier in the presentation? Question, is college fun? There's two ways to answer that. Yes, college is a blast a lot of the time. Um, you have a lot more freedom um, and you have a lot more time to do the things that you really love to do. On the flip side of that, that's if you are intentional and are going out and making college fun. If you expect college to just be fun sitting in your dorm room, college is not going to be fun at all. I have, that's, that's a very true, very true statement. I see a lot of people who like have done that. Um, so college is a lot of fun if you put a little bit of work in planning it uh, to be fun and making sure you're on top of things. College is not fun when you have an exam the next day and you know you are not going to do well on it. College is a lot less fun during those times. Yeah, um, let's see, hardest, hardest like new habit to, to develop. Uh, well, in high school, 8 a.m. 8 a.m. classes are like a breeze. You guys start at 8 a.m. every day. In college, it is amazing how fast 8 a.m. feels a lot earlier. Um, so make sure you try and keep up a healthy sleep schedule, going to bed at 10 or 11 or even midnight and waking up at six, seven or eight. Um, because it is super easy. All the fun things and all the events and meetings happen in the evenings. And it is super easy to find yourself staying up later and later, and waking up later and later, trying to make it to that 8.30 class. Um, so that's definitely a habit that I would recommend investing time in maintaining.